Hey, Rocky, how are you today? I'm pretty good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good, doing good. Um, good to finally make your acquaintance online, per se. Same's with me. <laughs> uh, hey, I want to ask you, um, how, what's the, the wildfire situation? Is that north of you? or? Oh, yeah. Um, so... Well, I'm in Anaheim, so the fires are kind of either above and to the, like, the west side, so they're more towards the left of me when it comes to, like, living here, or the right, depending on where you're turned, I guess, but it's it's not too far, but it's also not too close either, so gotcha. and they're pretty much contained at this point now, I think, so uh, the air is a lot better. Good. <laughs> but days I was like I couldn't even breathe it was so bad I had to like close all my windows and stuff oh huh. well that's good I'm glad it's not in, in any kind of imminent presence to your where you're living that's good yeah thankfully <laughs> yeah now I want to know I've talked to the, the guys about it before but I'd like to know a little bit of the backstory if you're not too sick of talking about it of how the band <laughs> formed from your perspective though like, okay. What was your experience on, on, you know, being approached by them or, or how you guys got this all started? Yeah, well, um, it started with Billy and Tim. They uh, found each other online. I think Tim was doing a cover, like, just bass. And then Billy was like, oh, I can lay down some stuff on that. Like, that'd be fun to just do it for fun. And then uh, eventually they were like, we need a singer. And um, we had a mutual friend that um like I, I went to school with basically and their dad reached out to me and was like hey uh, uh you know my friend's looking for a singer do you think you'd be down and I was like sure like yeah I'm, I'm open to it so um Billy messaged me through Facebook um I met with him at his house and I recorded like the longest song of all time <laughs> with him so we did Cygnus X1 we did the whole Hemispheres uh, basically, and it was super, I mean, it was super fun, it was just, it was, uh, definitely, like, a lot of, like, it was just overwhelming at first, because sure. it was just a whole song, and I was like, oh my god, okay, like, because I thought it was just gonna be, like, oh, you're gonna record a song, and blah, 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 and I was like, all right, yeah, I could do a that, song, yeah. yeah, and I was like, that's, like, a whole side of an album, that's crazy, <laughs> like, it was, like, 18 minutes, but I learned the whole thing in like a week and uh, then recorded it, it was done. And then I thought that was it. You know, I thought like, oh, it just needs me for this one thing or whatever. But then it was like, well, hey, would you be down to do a few more, blah, 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 and like work with us? And I was like, for sure, like that, you know, you guys are really good and stuff. So we just kept doing covers um, online, you know, and it was just like a fun project at first. Um, we weren't planning to be a band or anything. Um, but then eventually people, you know, liked our originals and they were like, Hey, you know, uh, like, we'd love to see you guys tour. Like, we'd love to go see you. And we had like a pretty decent fan base. Like we still do. Um, and it's growing, but at the time, like we had a decent fan base to start touring. And so we, we were trying to figure it out basically, like, how are we going to play live? Like we've never even met each other and blah, blah, blah. So then it started like, okay, we're going to play live. And, and then we all met and then it just blossomed from there. And now we're just, we're a band. <laughs> like, he, <clears throat> he told me, know? he told me like uh, almost a year ago that he'd mentioned that the first thing you guys did together was the hemispheres. And I was like, yeah. way to start off easy. <laughs> like it's yeah. a brutal song. Like, uh, do that but i was like well okay <laughs> you know um i've read somewhere that uh getty mentioned that they basically and obviously they didn't know what they're doing but he said they basically wrote that whole album and obviously he must have sang parts of it when he said when they went to go record it and they got it all arranged and everything it was only at that point he was like shit this this key is really high <laughs> like i have to like scream the whole album like it, it he almost like didn't really appreciate what a hard job he'd set up for himself when he wrote those songs but i feel that for a lot of his stuff i feel like he just went all the way out and was like wait i didn't think about this <laughs> like when he writes oh my god yeah yeah I, i've talked to other singers like um about that who who had really high parts and powerful parts male singers earlier in their career mm -hmm. and i'm like you know did, were you worried about that when you were younger and most were like you know you're too dumb when you're 20 you're just belting out the highest note you can hit you're not thinking that 
geez, when I'm 45, I can't hit that note. And, you know, but yeah, things. As a you're a lyricist in your own right because you write your own music and you've got a, a bunch of your own work. Mm-hmm. Billy's writing been like writing the lyrics for why why not? So as a lyricist yourself, do you take his lyrics at face value or do the two of you sit down and like do you want kind of a backstory from him? Like hey how how am I approaching this emotionally? Like what's what's the story you're conveying here? So like you have a better sense of how to deliver it. Does that make sense or? <laughs> question i like that um i like really appreciate that question Um, i feel like when he writes songs uh he'll send them to me and he won't like sometimes he'll tell me like why he wrote it or like what the backstory was for him but sometimes like i'll just listen to it and somehow it will really resonate with like what i'm going through at the time it's really weird like the whole the whole album um resonance like, as we were recording it over time, because it took, like, a few months to record all of the songs and stuff, and every time he sent me a new song to listen to, it would, like, directly relate to what I was going through at the time, and we never, like, talked about it or anything. Sometimes I would mention, like, dude, this song is, like, hitting home. Like, I really like this right. song. Um, but I never really got, like, into the depth of, like, this song means this to me, and, like, you know... Um, but he would definitely, like, let me know, like, okay, well, like, if we were recording it, too, um, he would basically say, like, okay, I need, like, a little more of this energy on this part because, you know, or whatever. Um, like, on Bully, it was very much like, okay, you need to channel, like, Freddie Mercury for this one. <laughs> like, Makes and sense. I was, okay, like, I know what you want, you know. And um, I would try, you know. Uh, different things and he'd be like okay wait like try it like this can you do like a little more aggressive or like a little more bite on this you know like he has um really good direction when it comes Mm -hmm. to like recording and stuff but also because he like because he wrote his songs like he knows what he wants to hear from like the vocalist right um you know like we both talk about like the energy of the song more than like this is what it's like about and this is what exactly I was going through like sometimes he does like for curtain falls and like other ones you know but a lot of them uh not I wouldn't say like a lot of them but some of them like etheria or um you know like hourglass or those times like those kinds of songs are kind of already like you already kind of know what they're about you know like he explained like okay look I wrote this as like a nostalgic song and I'm like oh okay cool like he didn't really have to like explain everything to me, but he does explain for like some of it, you know what sure. I mean? Uh, and as a songwriter, like, you know, just processing the music and, and consuming it before I record it, um, I have a good understanding of like how to consume it and process it, like just because I have to sing it. Right. So um, for me, like I also take what it means to me also. And then that's like, and then I record it. And it's also like, it's almost like a collaboration in that way. But it's not like he wrote the songs, but I like take my own thing from it. And then I I put that out, you know, and then he tell me if he needs more of something. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so, totally yeah. collaboration. It's just like uh, your role. It's just like, you know, it's it's no different to me than an actor saying, what's my motivation? Like, you right. want to have a sense of where, do I, how do I approach this? Totally. Right. And I think because that's, that's just be, a sign of what a professional would do. Yeah. Yeah, it's super fun. Though. I love Ring and Billy. He's, he's a great songwriter. Yeah. You know, one question I want to ask, is all of this stuff you're doing just a secret plot of yours to relaunch OMG TV? Oh my god. <laughs> Man, I wish that was my idea. It was not, but um <laughs> I definitely had fun doing that when I was in like 8th grade, I think. Yeah, I was a in- little kid. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. From the stuff I've heard of your solo stuff. Um it and correct me if I'm wrong, but the stuff I've heard you tend to kind of go in, uh, a more naturally like singer-songwriter acoustic-y kind of vibe. When you get immersed in like the latest Why Why Not album, um, and does that tend to rub off on your own writing, or does it make you kind of be like, oh, I can't wait to 
go a 180 and, and get back to my a simplistic, you know, simplistic, you know, four chord progression type thing. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, how does it affect your own personal creativity? I feel like it it honestly doesn't affect my writing very much. I feel like because it's not, uh, like, because I'm not writing the songs, I take it more as like. It's kind of hard to explain it, but it's almost like acting, you know what I mean? Like where I, I'm taking uh, Billy's work and I'm making it my own, but but I know it's not mine at the end of the day. And I know my stuff comes out in a different way. And like, it does, uh, like I'd say that Billy's writing is definitely inspiring. Like I am definitely inspired by Billy and his writing and his like lyrics and melodies and all of that. Um, but I wouldn't say that it affects my writing very much um, because I usually write uh, based on, well, sometimes what I'm consuming, you know what I mean? So if I'm like listening to a certain artist, sometimes I will tend to write or like try to pay homage to that artist, but um, in my own way. But I don't know, like lately my writing has been... Uh, mostly inspired by like Jeff Buckley and like mm. always Joni Mitchell sure. and um like other artists you know like I I mostly listen to like R&B and jazz and and like indie folk too but but like I listen to different music too so I don't know like I'm I'm constantly inspired by like artists and and music that I'm listening to but for the most part like it I definitely couldn't write like Billy. <laughs> like, like when it comes to his music and like, uh, you know, the, the like the music he's writing, right? Like, not even just the lyrics and the melodies. The melodies and the lyrics are like, oh my god! But the music is just—it's so intricate. And like, I'm a musician, but like, I couldn't play what he writes. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, he has to teach me like the things, you know, like for precious time. Like, he had to teach me like how to play that. Um, and I do, like, I play music, like, I play guitar, I play all that stuff, but I'm, like, nowhere near as good as Billy, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, he can play, uh, yeah, he so can definitely he, play. I mean, he has all this knowledge of, like, the guitar, too, so, you know, he has, like, endless, like, places to go with that, and, like, I do, too, in a way, but I don't know guitar that well, so I'm more, like, uh, kind of blindfolding and just, like, playing what I think sounds good, you know? Right. Like, I do with my eyes closed. I don't even know really what I'm playing. And then it's just, it feels good. And that's what I go with. But, yeah, dude, like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it doesn't affect me, uh, like, to a certain extent. Like, because it does, but it doesn't. You know what I mean? I don't know if that answers that. <laughs> no, no it, it totally does. It, it makes perfect sense. So did you have to, when you first started working with them, did you have to consciously adjust your approach to singing because you know like going like say when you first were doing hemispheres and obviously you know you're you're singing a laid out part that that's already been around for 40 years but mm -hmm. and the why why not original material was that a, a an adjustment like oh now i've got to sing over seven eight time and this kind of thing oh i mean yes like i will say um like technique wise i have been studying you know how to sing and like vocals for you know since I was nine basically so I've been singing for a long time but when it comes to like you know nailing those like rush songs and like nailing uh you know the why why not songs it's I mean those songs aren't easy <laughs> like those are tough songs and um I definitely had to adjust to like figure out what felt good for me when it comes to singing them um, because, you know, like, I don't know if you know a lot about vocals, but, um, you know, when people like belt, when they're like basically almost screaming the songs, like I know Getty probably was doing that towards the end, <laughs> you know, like right. towards the end of their career, it was probably really like hard on himself, um, like on his vocal cords. And what I want is to avoid that at all costs. Like I want to avoid... Uh, damaging my vocal cords so I I uh, use the Seth Riggs method like I, I use speech level singing and I actually teach that way um, too but 
it's basically like mixing. So you're mixing your head voice and your chest voice. And it's kind okay. of this middle ground that doesn't hurt to sing, but it also doesn't feel like you're screaming. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel like you're screaming, but it doesn't feel like like light, like a head voice. It's not like right. airy. It's like, it's, it's mixed basically. It's just your vocal cords are together and buzzing and they're nice. Um, yeah like it's it's more like it hits a certain frequency and i'm like okay there it is like it, it feels good right here um and then you know over the the whole two hour show like i i don't feel too horrible afterwards you know uh and i do try to take care of myself like at the shows too like i'll you know spray my voice i'll drink tons of water sometimes i'll just chug honey up there like you know because i i believe in vocal health like you know, menthol, then, cigarette, menthol cigarettes and whiskey. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't smoke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, like, well, sometimes, you know, sometimes I do need a shot before a show if I'm nervous, but usually I, now I'm pretty used to it. <laughs> yeah. I asked some, I don't know if you saw, but I asked some of the fans to ask you questions. On, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, so I just jotted down a few of them. Okay. Sorry, I keep... I keep looking down. I've got this thing. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it. <laughs> my so she's wandering around. I'm trying to make sure that she's not getting underneath my feet. Keep her there. <laughs> keep her in your mind. Yeah. All right. You asked the question. Cute. <laughs> um, Matt asked, uh, why would I not have many moving parts musically? And do you wear in-ear monitors on stage? And if you do, what do you keep in your mix? Yeah, okay, I saw that one, and I thought that was an amazing question. It's a good question. See that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do have in-ears, and I recently got in-ears um, from Shore, but also West Tone. So, like, my in-ears that I use are West Tone, um, but I also have Shores as my backup pair, you know, because those ones, like, I don't know, I'm more used to the West Tone ones, so I just wear those more. Okay. Um, vocal pack is sure so um and that was a gift so thank you to sure for that that was like really sweet um because i never had ears <laughs> like they've changed my whole life i bet so, yeah like i mean oh my god i couldn't hear shit before those things and those things just save my voice um and, and what i keep in my ear mix is myself first and foremost because that's like the reason you get those is to literally hear yourself <laughs> So definitely me, um, and then some of Billy's guitar, uh, a lot of Billy's vocals too, so I can hear our harmonies. Like no bass, because I literally hear Tim's bass like through it bleeds through everything, so I don't need to hear Tim's bass, but I feel it, you know. Yeah. Um, and then like basically no drums either. I don't have like unless unless I need the snare. Sometimes I'll put the snare in and the kick just so I can like be on time with everything if I need sure. to. But for the most part, uh, I can usually hear the drums right behind me. If we're on a bigger stage, I will need some drums and like definitely Tim's synth actually. So yeah, I do have Tim's keyboards and I have Billy's guitar, Billy's vocals, some of the drums. And if, and if we're on a small stage, like no drums and like barely any synth. So it's like, it just depends on like where we are and like what the setup is but yeah like mostly myself though because i usually can't hear myself so that's like the first thing i make right. sure is like nice and balanced but yeah that's pretty much my mix like uh, brian asked what's for you the most difficult rush song to sing oh god um i feel like i answered this on another one, and i think what I said, and even what I still think, is Temples of Syrinx. So, like, the 2112 mm -hmm. thing and Temples of Syrinx. That one is just so ridiculously high. Every time we're going to, like, sing it, I just I get upset. But, like, <laughs> I know we're going to do it, but I'm always just like, oh, my God, it's so high, you know? Like, you know, because he's just like, we take it, get! Like, he's all the way up there, like, the whole time. It just, it doesn't even go lower. It's just, nee, 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 nee. You're right. It's and really like, prolonged. He just stays up there. You're right. Yeah. So that's probably the hardest one, even though it's not very long. It's just that like singing wise, that one's just like, please come out well. And like, please just stay balanced on this because like it's so high. 
Um, but I guess like lyric wise, the one that took me like really long to memorize was Natural Science, and that one gave me anxiety for like a like a long time. Like trying to to do that one live was like, oh my god, please don't fuck up the lyrics. Like that one was always difficult for me just because there were so many different parts um like but just so many different lyrics like almost everything was different um oh jim asked if because i've heard you do like highway star and stuff but jim asked if you ever uh covered any yes material yes i haven't done any yes i don't recall if i have but i know that my dad loves yes and i always like you know if i'm ever in the car with him like we're we're listening to usually prog rock <laughs> mm-hmm. um but no, I haven't uh, covered any yes. Yeah, It'd be fun a, though. Yeah, I I like I listened to a lot of yes in high school. Not as much anymore, but I've always liked them. But yeah, you you hear John Anderson, and I mean his speaking voice is just as high as his singing voice. Like you're like, yeah. oh, that's what hits the nose. He always yeah. sounds like that. <laughs> yeah. My student is actually because I uh, teach some kids, and one of my students is literally working on some yes tunes, and. Yeah, it's funny because I think about it, I'm like, well, Bill Bruford's like my favorite, you know, like drummer. Totally. But I almost like didn't even realize like how high the singer sings. But it's also just like it's constant. Like he literally talks like that, too. <laughs> like right. like you were saying, like he talks like that. He sings like it. It's probably effortless for him, honestly, because he's just I'm just being myself, you know? <laughs> yeah, because he never was a guy that sounded like he was straining to hit notes. Mm-hmm. It just sounded like that was his, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't get the sense he was pushing towards falsetto or anything. It always sounded like that's just the way he sang. But Yeah, normal voice. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I want to make sure that everybody knows, um, for any of the people who are going to watch this and don't know, shame on you, but make sure everybody knows, like, the website, best social media for you and why, why not. I mean, where, where all should everybody go to find the merch, the albums, the news, that kind of thing? Definitely on our web page. Um, if you want to follow us on Facebook, you can. Um, we're just why why not band.com. I think that's the website. Uh, and then also, if you want to uh, stay updated on just behind the scenes stuff, um, we have. It's not a Patreon, but it's kind of like that. And it's like you can subscribe to the um, Social Distance Club. And we basically just post videos and other things on there. And, uh, you know, you just get an email update whenever we come out with something. And it's just fun. Yeah. Uh, but that's uh, support us and help us out. Um, and then my Instagram is uh, R-O-K underscore L-O-B-S-T-A 97. So it's Rock Lobster 97. That's my personal uh, IG account. Other than that, there's the Why We Not uh, account on Instagram as well. And I mean, I feel like that's basically it <laughs> when it comes yeah. to social media. <laughs> yeah, that should cover it. Well, cool. Well, Rocky, thank you so much for taking the time to share some of the, uh, the inside details. It's, it's been a pleasure getting to finally pick your brain about some of that stuff. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I am super honored that, to be on here. <laughs>